Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, this is another Q&A video. And the question that I received is, Hello, Brother Luke. I wanted to ask you a few about a few verses that I am having trouble explaining. I believe in salvation by grace through faith alone, in Christ alone. I believe in the eternal security of the believer. And I reject the, quote, repent of your sins to be saved, unquote, false gospel. But sometimes people will bring up scriptures like Matthew 7, 16 through 19, and other verses that talk about bringing forth fruit to say that you have to have works. How do I explain these verses? What are they talking about? Well, first of all, brother, thank you for asking the question. And I call you brother because uh, you have uh, stated your belief that faith in, in Jesus uh, is the only requirement for our salvation. So that's how we test someone to see whether they are in the faith or not. So, yes, you're my brother. Thank you for asking the question. And uh, this is very, very important question. Uh, Matthew chapter 7 has been used by uh, the lordship heretics, the works heretics, for a long, long time uh, to promote their, uh, their heresy. But first, let me say that uh, um, there's a couple of basic things you've got to do whenever you're studying the Bible or teaching it or, or trying to find an answer in the Bible. Um, you've, you, you've got to understand the context. The context is, uh, there's a saying that a text taken out of context is a pretext. So a person can have a pretext, which is a pre-planned agenda to promote some, an idea. Uh, and they, they could have this pretext and pull a, a verse out of context to support their pretext. <laughs> and that's what many people do. They, they will take these out of context. If you look at it in context, then you'll understand what this is really talking about. So I'm going to start... Uh, where the context really begins in uh, Matthew chapter 7. Let's start with verse 13. It says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Okay, Bef before the verses that you cited that you want me to address, these are the two preceding verses, and this lays the foundation for the context. And that is that uh, Jesus is talking about two ways. There's this wide gate, the wide way, and Jesus says that many there be which go in thereat. So many are going down this wide way. And he says it leads to destruction. The truth is that all the religions in the history of the world are going down this wide road to destruction. Uh, because they're basing their, their religion, the, all their beliefs are based upon personal merit personal performance, somehow being able to qualify for heaven by, by satisfying God, by living a good life. That is what all the religions are based on. I don't call Christianity a religion. Uh, Christianity is a relationship with Christ as your Savior. So religions are based upon works, and uh, Christianity is based upon faith alone in Christ alone for your salvation. So here we have the beginning of this context. Jesus is talking about these two ways. The wide way, most people go on the wide way, they're trying to work their way into heaven. And then he says, 
Straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. So one of these ways leads to destruction, and the other way leads to life. And that's really the the dilemma every person faces in their life. Uh, the, the problem is uh, they are either going to go into destruction, which is the lake of fire or the second death, uh, or they are going to go into life everlasting, which we receive by putting our faith in Jesus as our Savior. So Jesus is laying out this uh, plan of salvation, this narrow way, and Jesus also says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. So Jesus himself is this way. The way is not a methodology, a way of living your life. The way is a person. Jesus is the way. We believe in him, and we've we've accomplished that. We've gone the right way. Uh, so here we have, in verses 13 and 14, Jesus beginning to explain what he's really talking about. Uh, and then when we get to verse 15, the next thing he says, Beware of false prophets. So he's talking about this wide road to destruction, the, the narrow way that leads to life, and but we were false prophets. So these false prophets are those people who are going to lead you down that wide road to destruction. That's the context. You know, these three verses in a row, so th the context is these false prophets are pe people who are preaching a false message of salvation. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Uh, now, so the first mistake people make is they believe that uh, this is talking about a believer. It's not talking about a believer. It's talking about a prophet or a teacher, someone who's teaching a message of salvation. You either teach uh, the 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 true message of salvation, or you're a false prophet who's teaching the false message that leads to destruction. So he says, uh, these uh, these false prophets, he says in verse 16, you, you shall know them by their fruits. So the, the fruit is not um, uh, to be taken as the, uh, the, uh, the, person who gets saved and then their life changes and all of a sudden they have they become good citizens and they're faithful spouses and and they give to charities and you can see that there's all kinds of good things going on in their life that's not what this is talking about this is talking about the false teacher or the true teacher and, and um the, their their fruit the fruit of a false teacher is the followers go into destruction <laughs> the fruit of a a true teacher for, of salvation, they, the people who listen to them, they go into life everlasting. Uh, let's go now to verse um, 20. And it says, Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. So this is still talking about these false prophets and the fruits of a false prophet. Now, this is the, this is an example of a false prophet and the fruit of a false prophet, someone who believes what he teaches. Verse 21, Jesus is speaking, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So, Jesus is saying that, just because you say, Jesus is my Lord, Lord, and you refer to Jesus as Lord, you think of him as your Lord. That doesn't mean, that's not the test. That's not what gives you life everlasting. Uh, he says, but what does give you life everlasting is, is the doing the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Um, so, so far we know that Jesus is talking about the way to get salvation the narrow way the, uh, is to believe in Jesus. The w wide way uh, is a, a, any religion or works uh, for your salvation, and that leads to destruction. Now, I want to elaborate more on this part that says, 
he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Uh, many work salvationists, they want to point out, not only they're saying that you've got to have fruits, we'll know if you're really saved by your fruits. Well, we've already pointed out that's not talking about a believer's uh, uh, works. It's talking about a false teacher. Uh, but we're also now they also take this verse, you gotta do the will of the Father. Well, we have to understand what the will of the Father is. So that's answered when we go to John chapter six, verse thirty eight through forty. Jesus is speaking. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all of which hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So, first of all, when they try to point to these verses and say you, you'll know a false believer by their fruits, that's, we've shown that that's wrong. These fruits are talking about the fruits of a false teacher. And when they say that you've got to do the will of the Father to be saved, uh, they want to make it seem like it's doing some kind of works and following commandments. But Jesus explains what he means by the will of the Father, and that is to believe in the Son for your salvation. That is just the will. If you want to do the will of the Father, believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God and your Savior who gives you eternal life. So, uh, now, let's go to verse 22. And Jesus is, is continuing. He, he just got through saying that not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So then we go to verse 22, he, he, Jesus says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Um, this, is, this is the question that I normally will pose to someone so that I can determine if I think that they're saved or not. I simply ask them, if you died and you're face to face with Jesus, and he says, why should I let you into heaven? What would you say? Well, this is the scenario that Jesus is describing right here. These people are in front of Jesus. They want to have everlasting life in heaven. And what they say to him is, Lord, Lord, we've done all these wonderful works in your name. So these are the people like Paul Washer, John MacArthur, John Piper, these Lordship Salvationists. If, when they die and they face Jesus and he says, why should I let you in? They're going to be boasting about their works, saying, Lord, you're my Lord. Uh, I followed you. I served you. I did this. But what does Jesus think of that? He says, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So, anybody who's watching this video, you must understand that uh, if you had to plead your case to God to have everlasting life in heaven, and you try to make your plea based upon your, what you've done, Jesus will say, don't, don't tell me about your works. Because the Bible says, the works of man are like filthy rags in the sight of God. Your works do not impress God. Your works cannot save you. And Jesus said, these people who come to him and say, Lord, Lord, look at all the works we've done. He's going to say, depart from me. Your works, it's iniquity. Now, we go to verse 24. Jesus is still speaking. He says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, 
I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Well, again, your uh, uh, false prophet is going to pull a verse or a phrase out of context. And uh, his pretext is to teach this false message that leads to destruction. In verse 24, they would pull out this part, say, Whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, doeth them. So they're going to construe that Jesus is saying you've got to do all, follow all his commandments. But Jesus already spoke earlier about his saying. His saying was what he has been speaking about in this context. And that is that uh, the, the road that leads to destruction is saying, Lord, Lord, look what I did. The road that leads to life is uh, believing in the Son. That's the will of the Father. So that's the saying of Jesus that in, is in the context of this chapter. So Jesus says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. So Jesus says, if you're listening to me now, what I'm telling you right now, and you're, you do the will of the Father, which is simply to believe in the Son for salvation, you're a wise man. You're building your house on a rock. Now, what is this rock? Well, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the rock. He's the rock of our sal salvation. He's our foundation of our faith. And then Jesus says, in verse 25, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. When you put your faith on the Savior, you have a solid foundation, and nothing can wash it away or blow it away. You have eternal security. You're saved. It's settled because your faith is in the right thing. It's in a person, Jesus, as your Savior. Uh, and then he goes on in verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not. Remember, the sayings he's talking about is, do the will of the Father, believe in the Son. Don't boast that your Lordship salvation is and all the works you're doing. Don't do that. So Jesus says, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. Well, there's more to that. Uh, I forgot to put that in here, but the winds came, the waters came, and washed it away, and it was, it was all destroyed. So, brother, that's uh, Matthew chapter 7 in context. Um... So there's basically, there's the answer to your particular question, but I also want to make sure that you understand this uh, principle. When we study and teach the Bible, we must always use context. And then the other thing I want to recommend to you is that um, you, you should always use the clear uh, proof texts uh, and and use that as your your test of what you believe rather than basing your faith upon questionable questionable verses that are easily taken out of context and misused for example i think it's uh, romans 3:28 the apostle paul says we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law now that's real clear we're justified by faith without works. It's faith alone. And there's many other. I've, I've uh, in many of my verses, and uh, I've given 10, 20, 30 clear cut verses that clearly state that our salvation is based upon one thing believing in Jesus as our Savior, nothing else. So these clear proof texts. Is what we, we base our salvation on, our faith in. And then the other verses like this that the work salvationists want to use and take out of context, yeah, we want to have an answer for them. But what I think is the wise thing to do in dealing with these people uh, is uh, do a reversal on them. Uh, 
in, instead of being uh, in a position where you've got to defend your faith, ask them to tell, explain our proof texts. So if someone says, what, well, what about this uh, verse in Matthew uh, 7, 16 through 19? I'd say, okay, that's a very good question. Um, I'll be glad to answer that. But could you explain this verse for me, please? To the man who worketh not, but believes in the one who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. Uh, we could, could you explain that to me? Interpret that verse to tell me what that means. Put the onus on them. Give them a clear proof text for faith alone and ask them. Put them on the defensive. And when they are forced to and confronted with a clear text like that, uh, you'll find that you'll have more success uh, persuading them that way than by just trying to be on the defensive all the time. All right, well, I hope that helps you not only with uh, this particular section of Matthew chapter 7, but in general, how to uh, study and uh, teach the scriptures. Uh, bless you all. In the name of our great Savior God, his name is Jesus Christ.